Hello viewers, welcome to News Week South Asia, a show where we will provide you fresh insights into South Asia's geopolitical, strategic and security situation. Let's take a look at the headlines first. Pakistan backed terror strikes Kashmir, seven civilians killed in cold blood. Support for Hamas reflects deepening radical sentiment in Pakistan. And Sri Lanka grapples with security fears as tourists advise to leave key areas. Pakistan's insidious campaign of terror in Jammu and Kashmir continues, with terrorists targeting unarmed civilians to disrupt peace and stall development. In their latest act of brutality, innocent migrant workers were gunned down in cold blood, exposing Islamabad's desperation to keep the region unstable. While Pakistan faces internal collapse, it continues to export violence across the border using proxies to sabotage Kashmir's progress. But these cowardly attacks will not break the spirit of the people or derail India's efforts to build a prosperous and peaceful Kashmir. Our story will tell you more. Pakistan's obsession with disrupting peace in Jammu and Kashmir continues unabated with terror outfits once again targeting unarmed civilians. In an escalation of violence, seven employees of an uninfrastructure company, including a doctor and six migrant workers, were gunned down by terrorists on October 20th. The attack occurred at a construction workers' camp near the scenic Sonmurg Health Resort along the Srinagar Leh National Highway, marking one of the most brutal terrorist strikes on laborers in Kashmir's recent history. The victims were part of a critical infrastructure project constructing tunnels that would provide all-weather connectivity to the strategically vital Ladakh region bordering with China and Pakistan. Terrorists stormed their camp in the evening, unleashing a hail of bullets on unsuspecting workers who were there simply to earn their livelihood. डॉक्टर साहब की कल खबर जो ही इलाके फैल गई तो मातम बर्फ आ गया रात लोग नजदीक सोए गए अभी तो भाई अभी भी थोड़े लोग अभी इस गगनगीर गांधरबल में क्योंकि ये उल्फत और प्यार देकर अभी भी लोग घरों में सहम गए थोड़े लोग घरों से बाहर दिस इज इन द फर्स्ट टाइम नॉन कश्मीरी माइग्रेंट वर्कर्स हैव बीन टारगेटेड Terrorists operating under Pakistan's influence have repeatedly attacked those employed in orchards paddy fields and construction sites aiming to drive them out of the region and cripple local development the resistant front or shadow group of the pakistan based lashkar e taiba has claimed responsibility for the sonmurg attack intelligence reports indicate that trf has become a proxy used by pakistani handlers to carry out targeted killings furthering islamabad's agenda of sabotaging peace and progress in Jammu and Kashmir. In a separate incident last week, the bullet-riddled body of a laborer from Bihar was found in Shopia, underscoring a growing pattern of violence aimed at non-local workers. These attacks are being seen as desperate attempts to spread fear and instability, especially as Kashmir undergoes rapid socio-economic development since the abrogation of article 370 so the problem here is that these terrorists and all isi is bent upon sending them with the aid and full notice of the pakistan government till the time we in, in india stop being reactive mode and take on a proactive mode that is we take this fight down to pakistan in its own territory this will carry on till the time the cost of these infiltrations and these terrorists is not imposed on the pakistan army nothing will change 
because Pakistan is hell bent upon raising up the terrorism again in Jammu and Kashmir and also trying to ensure that this message goes across to the world that Jammu and Kashmir is not stable. Jammu and Kashmir, there is unrest over there. So we have to now change our tactics and ensure that whichever post, whichever area the terrorism terrorists start infiltrating, that entire post should be eliminated. So that the cost of that goes on to the Pakistan army and the Pakistan rangers. Then only Pakistan will stop sending these terrorists inside the territory. The Indian government's efforts to promote infrastructure, investment and tourism in the Union territory are being met with hostility by Pakistan, which continues to rely on covert warfare to maintain unrest in the region. By attacking civilian workers, Pakistan-backed terror outfits aim to slow down infrastructure projects and obstruct the economic revival of Jammu and Kashmir. Despite repeated denials by Islamabad, the involvement of Pakistan-based terror outfits is undeniable. Training camps, logistical support and funding channels remain active across the border, fueling terrorism in the Kashmir Valley. These attacks are part of Pakistan's long-standing proxy war against India, aimed at keeping the region in perpetual turmoil. While terror groups try to instill fear, the resolve of the people and the government remains unshaken. As in recent operations, several terrorists connected to such attacks have been neutralized. This wave of terror has escalated further, with Pakistan-backed terrorists now intensifying attacks on both civilians and security forces. In a brazen ambush near Gulmark, two soldiers and two civilian porters were killed when an army vehicle was attacked. The surge in violence includes targeted killings of non-local labourers, highlighting the malicious intent behind Islamabad's support for these terror outfits. We have a report. Four separate terror attacks have shaken Jammu and Kashmir in just one week. The most recent attack occurred on October 24, when terrorists ambushed an army vehicle belonging to the 18 Rashtra Rifles near Gulmarg, close to the line of control. Two soldiers and two civilian porters lost their lives in the ambush, while four other soldiers were critically injured and are currently undergoing treatment. According to officials, the vehicle was en route from Bodh Patri, a remote area just 5 kilometers from the LOC, when the terrorists launched their assault. Security sources have indicated that Pakistan's border action team may be behind this ambush. The BAT, infamous for cross-border attacks, has previously carried out brutal operations in Kashmir and their involvement in this latest attack has not been ruled out. When we heard this news, that a poor Mushtaq Ahmed Chaudhary, who is a Hondi Naushara, has been a real case of death. This is a serious thing, because his home is a child who is a cancer patient. His mother is a child. और इसको तीन साल का बच्चा है कहाँ जाएगा वो तीन साल का बच्चा इस स्टेज पे और इसकी इसकी जो बीवी है वो भी बिचारी छोटी है घर में कोई ऐसा सोर्स ऑफ इनकम नहीं है इसके जो फादर हैं उसको महाना लगभग दस बारह हजार रुपया खर्चा आता है उसकी दवाई पे या बाकी सब चीजों पे आपने देखा होगा वो इस टाइम बिस्तरे में बैठा हुआ है सिर्फ इतना बोलता है कि मुझे ये क्या हुआ मेरे ही साथ ऐसा क्यों लिहाजा मैं इतना बोलना चाहूंगा कि अब तो हद हो गई वही जानता है जिसके घर से उसका बेटा निकलता है जो घर वीरान हो जाते हैं वही इस इस चीज की पेन समझ सकता है तो इस वक्त इसकी हालत क्या है घर में कोई सोर्स ऑफ इनकम नहीं है कुछ भी नहीं है तो मैं हुकूमत को भी इसके साथ साथ ये कहना चाहूंगा कि जनाब इंसाफ की जरूरत है while security forces have launched counter operations in response to the Gulmarg ambush, terrorists have simultaneously stepped up attacks on civilians, particularly targeting non-local labourers. On October 24th morning, 
terrorists shot and injured a migrant worker from Uttar Pradesh in the Thrall area of Pulwama district. This attack follows a horrific massacre in Gandharbal district where six non-local laborers and a local doctor were killed at a construction site. On October 18th, another laborer from Bihar was shot dead by terrorists in Shopia district. The repeated targeting of non-local workers highlights Pakistan's sinister agenda of instilling fear among those contributing to Kashmir's economy. These innocent civilians, many of them daily wage laborers and street vendors, have become soft targets for Pakistan-backed terrorists whose aim is to disrupt development efforts and create communal tensions. The terrorists in Kashmir want to portray a feeling that you might include democracy in Kashmir but we are going to fulfill our agenda and you are no, never going to be successful. That is the message they have sent to Bharat and the government of our country. Come what may, we all know that these terrorists are being helped with weapons, they are being helped with training by Pakistan. No other country is doing this except for Pakistan. This is a loud and a clear message to Pakistan that Pakistan must immediately halt these adventurous activities that they are trying to play with India. Our external affairs minister, Mr. Jay Shankar, also uh, when he had gone for the SCO meet, he made certain things very, very clear that talks with Pakistan only are possible if Pakistan keeps aside the issue of terrorism, point number one. Point number two is if issues of Pak occupied Kashmir are immediately solved and Pak occupied Kashmir is handed over to India. This escalation of violence exposes Pakistan's deep rooted strategy to destabilize Kashmir even as Islamabad faces a multitude of crises at home. With its economy in free fall, political instability rampant, and international isolation growing, Pakistan continues to divert attention by fueling cross-border terrorism in India. Rather than addressing its own governance failures and human rights abuses, Pakistan is fixated on keeping Kashmir in a state of fear. The diversionary tactic not only masks its internal failures but also serves to mislead its own population by keeping Kashmir at the forefront of its narrative. In a notable show of support for Hamas, Islamist groups in Pakistan held a funeral prayer for the killed militant leader Yahya Sinwar, highlighting deepening radical sentiments in the country. This event, organized by Jamaat e Islami and Pakistan Markazi Muslim League, drew hundreds of attendees in cities like Karachi and Lahore. Sinwar, who played a pivotal role in the deadly October 7 attacks on Israel, is now being glorified, raising concerns about the normalization of extremist views among Pakistani youth. Such actions not only reflect growing radicalization but also pose challenges to regional stability and complicate international relations. Take a look. In a troubling display of solidarity with a figure linked to violence against Israel, Islamists in Pakistan held a funeral prayer for killed Hamas leader Yahya Sinwar on October 19. This event underscores the ongoing radicalization trends within certain segments of Pakistani society. Known for its ideological alignment with groups like Hamas, Jamaat Islami organized the prayers in country, signaling its support for Sinwar's actions. Approximately 200 individuals attended the event in Karachi, while dozens more gathered in Lahore for a similar prayer organized by the Pakistan Markazi Muslim League. Yahya Sinwar was recognized as the architect behind Hamas's deadly October 7 attacks on Israel, which resulted in significant casualties. His death occurred during a gunfight with Israeli forces, concluding a year-long manhunt. This act of honoring a militant leader raises concerns about the normalization of extremist views in Pakistan and the potential for increased radicalization among youth 
influenced by such narrative. پوری غزہ کی قوم کو خراج تحسین پیش کرتا ہوں اور دنیا بھر میں جتنے بھی لوگ ان مظلوموں کی حمایت کر رہے ہیں خاص طور پہ امریکہ اور یورپ کے عوام جس طرح سے غزہ کے عوام کے ساتھ کھڑے ہیں میں ان عوام کا بھی شکریہ ادا کرتا ہوں انہیں بھی خراج تحسین پیش کرتا ہوں اور میں شدید مذمت کرتا ہوں پوری مسلم دنیا کے ان جابر حکمرانوں پہ کہ جنہوں نے مسلم دنیا میں احتجاج پر بھی پابندی لگائی ہوئی ہے اور ہم غزہ کے مسلمانوں کے حق میں احتجاج بھی نہیں کر سکتے A significant section of Pakistani society has historically demonstrated support for Hamas driven by a combination of ideological, religious and political factor. As the conflict between Israel and Hamas marked its one-year anniversary on October 7, protests erupted across Pakistan, highlighting a growing radical sentiment. In Lahore, over a thousand people participated in a rally organized by the group Tehreek-e Bedariye Ummat e Mustafa. The protesters chanted slogans such as "Death to Israel" and violently attacked an effigy of Israel Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu with sandals and flag poles. In addition to the demonstrations in Lahore, approximately 200 people marched in Karachi, while over a hundred gathered in Islamabad collectively showcasing a rising tide of support for Hamas and opposition to Israel among segments of the Pakistani population. <laughs> اس وقت فوری طور پر فلسطین میں بھیجے تاکہ وہ غزلہ کے مظلوم بائیوں کے ساتھ ان کی ڈھال بن سکے اور اسرائیل اور امریکہ کو نیست و نابود کر سکے ظالموں سہونیوں کے خلاف مومن مسلمان متحد ہو جائے وہ دن دور نہیں کہ انشاءاللہ وہ نابود ہو جائے اور خبلہ اول آزاد ہو جائے حماس اٹیکس سدن اسرائیل آن اکٹوبر سیون ٹوینٹی ٹوینٹی تری killing around 1,200 people and taking about 250 as hostages. The glorification of figures like Sinwar by parties such as Jamaat Islami raises alarms about the potential for increased radicalization in Pakistan. The intertwining of political rhetoric and violent extremism poses significant challenges to stability and peace in the region. This trend also complicates international relations, particularly as the global community grapples with the implications of extremist movements. Sri Lanka is grappling with heightened security challenges as concerns mount for the safety of tourists. The Israeli National Security Council has issued a warning advising its citizens to evacuate popular areas like Arugam Bay due to credible threats of terrorism. In response, Sri Lankan authorities have intensified security measures following the arrest of three suspects linked to a potential attack on Israeli tourists. Both the US and German embassies have issued alerts, urging caution and advising travelers to avoid affected regions. Arpot. Concerns for the safety of tourists in Sri Lanka are rising as Israel's National Security Council has issued a stark warning to its citizens. Reports indicate a potential terrorist threat targeting popular tourist areas, particularly in the southern region of the island. The Israeli government has called on its nationals to evacuate specific tourist areas in southern Sri Lanka, notably Arugam Bay, and nearby beaches, citing credible intelligence about a potential terrorist attack. According to reports, authorities in Sri Lanka have intensified security measures following the arrest of three individuals linked to a suspected plot against Israeli tourists. October यहाँ किसी विदेशी के जाति के यान इलाका करके ना यहाँ किसी प्रहार या किल्ला कराने सुधार नाम किया। Although the specifics of the threat have not been detailed, the Israeli Security Council is at 
advising its citizens throughout Sri Lanka to remain vigilant and steer clear of large gatherings. In light of these warnings, police forces have significantly bolstered their presence in the impacted regions and officials are on heightened alert to safeguard both local residents and tourists. Mevanavita, the Videshikange Arakshava, Tahuru Kalatiana, Etekama, Ounot, Sahimata Patina, Araksha Sambandi. The U.S. Embassy in Sri Lanka has issued a security alert indicating that it has received credible information about a potential attack aimed at well-known tourist spots in the Arugam Bay region. In addition, Germany's foreign ministry has advised its citizens to either avoid the area altogether or leave as quickly as possible, referencing indications of possible attacks on tourist destinations. Sri Lanka has seen a steady influx of visitors this year, with government statistics revealing that 1.5 million tourists arrived in the first eight months, including over 20,500 from Israel. However, with rising tensions linked to the Israel-Hamas conflict, the safety of tourists remain a critical concern for both local authorities and international governments. Local authorities in Sri Lanka are acutely aware of the implications of these international tensions on their tourism industry. Such geopolitical tensions can lead potential visitors to reconsider their travel plans, fearing for their safety in a region perceived to be unstable. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We'll be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at anin.com. This is Shivangi Mishra signing off on behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care.